expert systems. What is an expert system? Expert systems are those systems that would typically give us output based on answers that we enter into the system as non-experts. For example, we need to record all the expertise from a particular person, but we want to use that system in order to come to the same conclusions as that particular expert. Let's say we want to identify bird species. Now, not everybody is experts in birds, so you would typically make use of a book or you would have a program which would ask you a few questions. It has actually captured all the knowledge from an expert and then that component would allow you to identify the bird and then to come to the same conclusions that an expert would have come to. So we typically find that it would enable a novice to perform at the level of a human expert in a particular field. It's going to make use of heuristics or rule of thumb in order to draw conclusions and it captures the knowledge of experts and it makes it available to other people or non-experts. So when do we typically use expert systems? Whenever we want to go and capture the knowledge of an expert, and we typically find that the expert system consists of a collection of integrated and related components, including the knowledge base, an inference engine, an explanation facility, a knowledge base acquisition facility, as well as a user interface. Now, let's go and look at the, the whole system. And each of these will be explained in the following slides. So typically what we would know or what we would find is a knowledge base where all the knowledge of the expert is recorded. So we've got an expert that would through the knowledge base acquisition facility capture its knowledge that would be interpreted through the inference engine, would be linked to the explanation facility and that would be recorded in the database. A user would subsequently come, they would interact with the system talk through or function through the inference engine which would communicate to the knowledge base and ultimately get answers which would be explained through the explanation facility. So let's look at each of these components in a little more detail. First of all, our knowledge base. Now the knowledge base will store all the relevant information, the data, the rules, the cases and relationships that expert systems typically use. Now it's a natural extension of a database as well as a decision support system. Also important, knowledge bases should be developed for each and every type of application. For example, if we want an expert system to identify bird species, we need to create a database with all of that information. Alternatively, if you want an expert system for another situation, you would need to go and create a specific system that would cater the needs for that system. Now, there's a bunch of techniques available that would help us to create a knowledge base. And it's important to know these. First of all, you need to assemble a bunch of human experts. So this would allow them to sit together to share the knowledge and for developers to capture that particular knowledge. Alternatively, you can make use of fuzzy logic. Now, fuzzy logic is where we have situations where there's again missing information and it's going to try to make educated guesses to solve that missing information. Examples include washing machines with fuzzy logic where you can put in your washing, it will actually go and weigh the washing, determine how much water is needed, soap and detergent, or perhaps the quickest cycle that you need to follow in order to complete your washing. Alternatively, we can make use of role, rules. Now, these are conditional statements that links conditions to various actions or outcomes. For example, if then statements. So if you wake up in the morning, there's a certain number of procedures that you will actually go and execute. And then the last one is cases. Now with cases, we're going to develop a solution for a current problem or situation and then we might be able to use these cases in future decisions or situations. So if there's, let's say, flooding in low, um, low areas, what are the consequences? What do we need to look out for? And that can help us for future predictions and calculations. Now, where do we find expert systems? 
One example includes perhaps banks if you want to apply for a home loan. They would ask you a few questions and based on the questions they would determine whether you would be a good candidate or whether you might be a risk for the, for the bank in order to be awarded a loan. The next component that we're going to focus on is the inference engine. Now the inference engine is a part of the system that seeks information and relationships from the knowledge base and that would provide answers to the human that's accessing that information. Now it can either work with one of two processes or one of two techniques. The first one is known as backwards chaining. Now with backwards chaining it starts with the conclusions and it actually works backwards to the supporting facts. On the other hand we might have the facts and we want to come to a conclusion and in that case we're going to work with forward chaining. So you know the facts but you want to know how does it get to a conclusion using those facts that you've indicated. The next component is the explanation facility. Now this is a component that will actually allow a user to understand how the whole system came to a certain conclusion or result. So once a bird species has been identified, the explanation facility will tell you that these are the identifying factors that actually indicate that it concluded to detect that particular species. The component that's directly linked to the expert, the Knowledge Base Acquisition Facility. This component provides a convenient and efficient way of capturing and storing all the key components that's required in the Knowledge Base. So typically we would find that it's going to present users and decision makers with easy to use menus. So they will go and just tick boxes or select options from a menu structure. And then based on that, it's going to store the information and relationships within the knowledge base. This makes the knowledge base easier to work with as well as less expensive. Now it's important to realize that knowledge acquisition can actually either be manual or it can be automated. And we also need to go and validate and update it frequently. For example, if you have situations where information changes rapidly, we would typically need to go and update the information during certain periods. Now this is where the knowledge acquisition facility actually fits in. So you have your expert that would communicate through the knowledge acquisition facility and all of that knowledge would be recorded within the knowledge base. On the other side we have the user. The user needs to interact through a user interface. So the user interface actually makes it easy for a user to get access to the knowledge of an expert. Now this can either be text-oriented user interfaces where it uses menus, forms and scripts, or it might be a graphical user interface where it's going to give you visual cues and then based on your answers it's going to reach various conclusions. Now who are the people involved in creating an expert system? It's important to realize that the expert system might or will only address a specific area of knowledge and this is also known as a domain. For example, if we create an expert system to identify bird species, that would be the domain of that particular system. Now, we would need to have a domain expert that actually records information of that particular domain. So the expert would be able to recognize the problem. They would be able to um, develop general frameworks for problem solving, to formulate theories for various situations, to develop and use general rules. They would know when to break rules. They would know how to solve problems quickly and efficiently. They would have learned from past experiences, know what is important, not important, and then they would be able to explain the situations and solutions to various other people. Now there's also some other users involved. So we know that we've got the domain expert. So this is a person or a group of people that's going to provide the knowledge in a specific region or area. Then we have our knowledge engineer, which is usually a trained professional with IT or IS skills that will be able to go and design, develop, implement and maintain the expert system. And then lastly, we would have the knowledge user 
that would interact with the system and that would gain the knowledge that was recorded by the, the actual expert. Now, in order to develop an expert system, we need to realize that we need to follow a systematic development approach similar to what we learned about in topic number one, the systems development life cycle. Now, this approach includes determining the requirements of the system, identifying the experts that we need to talk about in order to gather the knowledge. How would we go about to construct the components of the system? How would we implement the results? And then how would we maintain and review such a system? Now, what are some examples of expert systems? Expert systems can be found in all industries and areas that we might interact with. Now, here's a list of some of the examples, which include perhaps games, medical systems, chipping, stock picking, um, performance evaluation of employees, virus detection, etc., just to name a few. Again, I would recommend that you go on the internet and search for perhaps specific expert systems, which will give you an idea of the capabilities of what's available. The last thing to realize about expert systems is sometimes they refer to an expert system shell. Now, this is where we going to work with the inference engine and the knowledge base acquisition facility and this is actually a suite of software that would allow you to go and create or construct the knowledge base so it works with those two components and it aids you in adding the information to the database now let's look at a few examples of expert systems again these would depend on different users different environments and there are actually others available but the ones that you can go and look at and search for include Clips, Cookie Jita, Excess Corvid, ESTA, Lantec Expert Systems, Open Expert, as well as Prolog Expert Systems. In the next section, we're going to talk about multimedia, more particularly about augmented reality as well as virtual reality.